Hey there, Pixies and Peeps. Thanks for joining me and welcome or welcome back to the Fairy Garden, which is what I call my craft room. Today's video is all about lemons because it's part of the five under five dollar challenge, which is hosted by Missy over at Crafty Cove, Emily with Farm Charm Chic, and this month their guest host is Jackie from Blessed Beyond Measure. Now I have a quick confession. Lemon decor is not really my thing, but crafts under five dollars is totally my thing. But then I couldn't decide what to make. I had so many ideas. Like, should I make a tiered tray, a sign, a wreath? I was seeing lemons everywhere. So much so that I couldn't hardly narrow it down. But, lucky for you, I did. So let's get into it with project number one, the Vintage Riser Tray. Now I've had this football shaped cutting board that was given to me as part of a gift set quite a few years. And to me, if you flip it over, it kind of looks like the shape of a lemon. So I found these printables online for free and it's a vintage lemon paper and a vintage lemon juicer. So I printed them up and I'm going to decoupage it onto the top of my little lemon tray. And I'm going to put the little vintage lemon juicer right on top of that as well. Now as you watch me decoupage these items, I think a few apologies are probably in order for this video. Seems that whenever I pick up my glue gun, it hits the wire to my camera and it makes it shake a little bit. Actually, it makes it shake a lot a bit. So for that, I apologize because I didn't even know it was happening until I started editing the clips for this video. So now that I got apology number one out of the way, I'm going to show you how I file down the edges of the decoupaged paper because I cut it a little bit larger than the actual cutting board. And now I'm going to take this decal that I made with some yellow vinyl and my silhouette cameo. And I'm just going to put that at the top of my tray. It says, Squeeze the Day Lemonade Company, established 1676. I had done a little research, and one website I found said that lemonade was first served in Paris in 1676. So there's a cool little useless fact for you. Now we're going to make some feet for our little riser tray using some wooden beads and my folk art chalk paint in the color Java. I just put the beads on a skewer, mix the paint with some water, and paint it on, and then wipe it off with a wet cloth or baby wipe. I've fallen in love with this technique recently, and it just comes out so beautiful on all different kinds of wood. Now once those beads are dry, I'm going to take the same skewer stick and I'm just going to cut it down so that it fits just inside both the big bead and the little bead. The piece of skewer stick will act as more like a reinforcement to keep the beads a little more sturdy once you put them on the tray. So I'm trying to zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing and I'm sorry it's a little blurry, but I put the big bead down, then glue the skewer stick in the middle and I'm going to put the smaller bead on top of the skewer stick as well. I'll repeat that process for each of the four feet for my tray and then we'll move on to adding some more embellishments. Meanwhile, are you new here? If so, I'd like to formally invite you to become part of the Pixie Party by hitting that subscribe button down there and then ring my bell and click all so you'll know every time I upload a video. If you're already a part of the Pixie Party, I'd like to say welcome back and thank you for all of your support because without you, I wouldn't be here. 
Now, to make some handles for my little tray, I'm going to take this piece of faux leather that I received from BB Craft. They have some great craft supplies on their website, which I'll leave linked down below in the description box. And I chose this pack of 10 sheets of faux leather in different colors, amongst a few other items as well. So here I am just cutting out a couple of thin strips of it to use as handles on the tray. Once I have the placement and sizing, I'm going to cut it down and then just use my hot glue to glue it onto the tray. And there's some of that shaking that I was talking about. Yep, I apologize for it folks. I'm definitely going to have to be more mindful of that in the future. Now once I have my handles glued down, I'm going to take these little brads that I cut the ends off of and just gave them a little distressing with some Java colored chalk paint. And I'm gluing them to the handles to make them look kind of like upholstery tacks. And since it's all finished, let's go ahead and see the cost breakdown on this tray. Now my cutting board was free, but you can get one at the Dollar Tree for about a dollar. The printables were free, the vinyl I'd say about 25 cents, faux leather about 25 cents, and the wood beads were just a few cents themselves. So all in, this thing maybe cost $1.50 to $2. And now DIY number two is a lemon garland. Now as I said in the beginning, I had quite a few ideas on how to make some lemon themed decor. However, I didn't have any lemon beads to make a garland. So I'm going to make some salt dough and I'm going to make my own lemon beads. I love making things with salt dough. It's kind of like using polymer clay, but it's much easier and much cheaper. I'll leave the recipe down in my description box, but basically it's two cups of flour, one cup of salt, and one cup of water. I like to try and dissolve as much of the salt as I can in the water, and then just mix it all together until you get a nice, thick, but yet not sticky dough consistency. Mix and knead it together until you can no longer feel the granules of salt. Then you just put it in a Ziploc bag and refrigerate it while your oven is heating to 200 degrees. I find the colder the dough, the easier it is to work with because the heat from your hands makes it kind of soft and mushy. So in order to make this bead, I'm going to flatten out a piece of dough and then slowly roll it into a ball as I lift my hands away from each other. This actually helps ensure that there's no cracks in the dough and no air bubbles in the middle. Then I stick it onto my skewer stick and I'm going to roll and mold it into the shape of a little lemon. Oh, and I should mention that the more flour you have on your surface, your hands, and even maybe your tray, the easier the dough is going to be to work with as it gets a little sticky. So then you just get them all on your skewer, kind of roll them around a little bit and play with them, and stick them going across the lip edge of a cookie sheet. Then bake them at 200 degrees for about three hours. When they come out of the oven, they may have a few sharp edges and little areas that are imperfect. I like to use my Dremel sanding tool to go around and fix those up. However, my lemon garland game is a lot like me. It's crooked, wonky, far from perfect, and sometimes a little bitter. And now I put them back on some skewers, give them a good coat of my folk art acrylic shiny in the color lemon custard, and I'm putting them into my little drying board, which is just a piece of MDF board that I drilled some holes in. Using this principle that I purchased off of Etsy, I'm going to make a tag for my garland. The printable was $3.75, but since I saved so much on making my own lemon bead, I figured I could splurge a little bit on a printable. 
especially since he's so darn cute. I'll leave the link to him in the description box below too. So I'm making the tag out of a piece of foam core board just by measuring out where I need my printable to lay. I cut off a corner at the top right and then I'll use that piece as a template to cut off the corner on the top left. Punch a hole in the top middle so that we can feed some twine through it and then I paint the whole piece in this folk art outdoors opaque in the color cobalt. I really love the rich blue color this paint is and paired with the yellow from the lemons it really pops. Much like my knees and my back and my hips and well, basically anything else on my body nowadays. So anyway, back to the project. Once I cut out the little gnome, I put down some Mod Podge and of course decoupage it onto my blue tag. By the way, huge thanks and shout out to my friend Indiana Jones for sending me some more Mod Podge. Because as you can see, this one, I'm almost down to the bottom of the barrel. I've had this big jar of, well, basically kids' beads since my kids were, well, kids. And I picked out a whole bunch that I could use for my garland. But these blue ones just weren't quite the right color blue, so again, I gave them a good coat of that acrylic paint in the color cobalt. And now it's time to assemble the garland. I'm taking these little yellow beads to be the ends of my lemons sticking a lemon bead, a yellow bead, a green bead to look like a leaf, and a blue bead as a spacer. And I'm going to repeat that pattern onto my green jute twine that I got in the automotive section at Dollar Tree. Then I just feed the twine onto the tag and tie it onto the garland. When tying a knot on the other end of the garland, make sure you leave a little leadway for the beads to kind of move freely so they're not very stiff and therefore you can drape it across your decor. And of course our garland is going to need a tassel. So I'm taking the tag and I'm using it as a sizing template to wrap my green jute twine around about 25 to 30 times. Then I slip my scissors into the twine and cut it off. I then take a spare piece of the jute twine and I feed it through the middle of all the tassel strands and tie it in a knot. Now in order to wrap some twine around the tassel, I'm going to show you a little trick on how to hide the knot. You start by taking the end of your jute and placing it up at the top by the tassels. Then come down and make a loop and hold that in place with your thumb. Then starting at the top, start winding your jute around your tassel. When you get quite a few wraps, cut your jute rope from the spool and take that in and feed it through the loop that you were holding with your thumb. And then you pull the strand that at the top in order to pull the loop up underneath the wraps and therefore hides your knot. Now 
Now you can trim off your excess pieces or just hide them in the tassel and use them to hang your tassel from your garland. I decided to take a little bit of that scrap faux leather and wrap that around the middle of my tassel. It just gave it a little bit more of a finished look. And now to finish it all off, I'm going to make a little scrappy finger bow for the tag. I just wrap my jute around my fingers a few times, tie it off in the middle, and fan it out a little bit. Of course, one more little piece of scrap leather won't hurt either. It'll kind of tie it in to the other end of the tassel. a small piece of that faux leather right in the middle of my bow. So now that this project is finished, let's look at the cost breakdown. The amount of salt dough we used cost maybe 50 cents. The beads I had on hand and the jute, 10 cents each. The foam core board was free and the gnome printable was 375. The total cost coming in under $5 at $4.45. So let's move on to DIY number three, a lemonade stand sign. How many of you out there are old enough to remember a thing called Shrinky Dinks? I know I'm not, because I'm only 29 again. But guess what? They have this thing called shrink film that you can put through your inkjet printer, print off whatever pieces or colors or pictures you want, cut them out, and shrink them in your oven. So I designed these lemons in my Silhouette Design Studio. I blew them up, I lightened the color, and then I printed them out, and then I cut them out. And then I just baked them in my oven according to the package directions. Because there are several different kinds of shrink films that take inkjet, and a few of them are different from others. Some take a higher heat, some take longer, and some shrink down to 50%, whereas others shrink down to maybe two-thirds. And now I'm going to take this pack of wooden stickers that I got from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to use my acrylic paint marker to make them look like lemon slices. As I said earlier, I have a few apologies to make within this video, and here comes the second one. I apologize that my video is so long this time, but I did have to make five crafts and I don't usually buy my craft materials, I make my own. So it took me a while. However, I have sped everything up because, well, I'm old and I craft slow. So if you think it's hard to follow my procedures at three times the speed, Try following me across the house to the bathroom at normal speed. Shoot, even sped up at times, I'm still slower than I used to be. Here we are with a printed out picture, and I'm going to cut it out and trace it onto one of the Dollar Tree clear cutting mats. I would like to say thank you to Missy, Emily, and Jackie for hosting this 5 under 5 challenge because it's really a lot of fun. However, since the lemon thing isn't my theme, it kind of brought me out of my comfort zone. But I like a good challenge. And all of these women are truly amazing. I really wanted to be a part of this. I know I always say that the women I collab with are amazing, but they truly are. And with my reputation on the line, you're only as good as your gang. And my gang is pretty great.
Be sure to check out the playlist in the description box below to see what all these women came up with, amongst many others. You're sure to find some inspiration. So once I cut out the cutting mat picture, I traced it onto a piece of craft foam, in the color yellow of course, and then I realized that I don't need the whole picture to be yellow, just about two thirds of it to make it look like it's full of lemonade. And then I'll need to cut out the part where the handle is, on both the craft foam and the chopping mat. I'm going to be hot gluing these little lemon slices that I colored into the craft foam to make it look like they're floating in the pitcher of lemonade. So I'm just playing around with the placement. To cut out the inside of the handle, I'm going to use my razor knife and just cut a slit so that I can slip my scissors in there and cut it out as smooth and easily as possible. And now to get all the permanent marker lines off the chopping mat, I'm just going to take an alcohol swipe and rub around the edges. Alcohol will actually remove permanent marker from your skin, your walls, and almost any surface. So there's a handy little tip for you. Once I have my lemon slices glued down, I'm actually going to take these seeds that I got out of an actual couple of lemons, and I'm gluing them down as well. Because when you do fresh squeeze lemonade, you're bound to get some seeds in there. these little clear plastic party cups and I'm going to take one and just cut it right in half. Now using it as a template I'm going to cut out some more of that yellow craft foam to make it look like the glass has some lemonade in it. Now I'm using this piece of foam core board as the backing of my sign and I've cut off the rounded ends of these craft sticks. I'm laying them out to see how tall I want the lemonade stand itself to be. And once I know the height, can cut down the craft sticks to make them look like shiplap. Now I have neuropathy in my hands and the dullest scissors in the world, so I use my tin snips which actually give me more control on cutting the craft sticks down. Because with a spring loaded handle, I don't have to push so hard and it kind of keeps them from flying across the room. So there's another handy little tip for you. Because the only thing you really want flying across the room is your bra when you get home from the Dollar Tree. So now that I have my placement all figured out, I'm just going to take some hot glue and glue them down to my foam core board. For the ledge of my lemonade stand, I'm going to use these mini tumbling tower blocks that I got, of course, at the Dollar Tree. I'll also be lining the sides of the board with some more craft sticks, so I'm going to mark where the Jenga blocks fall and use my tin snips again to cut out an area to go around the Jenga blocks.
Now using the very last of my cobalt paint, I'm going to give the whole foam core board one good coat. Literally one coat because that's all I had left of this paint. It kind of fit in well with this lemon theme because like a lemon, I had to literally squeeze the last of it out of that jar. And then I glued down my Jenga blocks and with a shaky camera, also glued down the craft sticks on the side. Along the top of the sign, we're going to have an overhang like a little shingled roof. So I'm putting down some more tumbling tower blocks, and we're going to angle some craft sticks on them like little shingles. I'm using my acrylic measuring grid as a straight edge to lay down my Jenga blocks. Because we all know I'm as crooked as they come, when it comes to putting down a straight line. Now, you can just cut some craft sticks in half, but I've been saving my pieces that I've been cutting off for other projects, and I'm just using them here to make my shingled roof. I just put some hot glue on the board, and some on the corner of the Jenga block, and then lay my craft stick down. The Jenga blocks help hold them at an angle, and just like that bra you send flying across the room, it just gives the craft sticks a little lift. Now I did get a little ahead of myself and I had to go back and remove one of those craft sticks in order to punch a hole to make a hanger in our sign. And I'm going to take some of this wooden dowel from a little chalkboard sign and I cut it in half. And now I'm going to tie some jute rope onto the end of the wooden dowel and feed it through the hole that I just made. That little piece of dowel is going to help keep the jute rope from going through the hole or tearing the foam core board. And I'm going to tie a piece on the other end as well once I get it fed through the hole. Now comes more painting. I figured I'd put down this piece of copy paper along the edge to keep me from getting some of this paint onto the blue background. However, as wonky as I am, that paper really didn't help much. But considering I'm a messy painter, it could have turned out much worse. So I went in and gave all of my wood pieces a coat of the folk art chalk paint in the color sheepskin. And I just love how this color looked on those ship lap craft sticks. I gave the shingles on the roof a good coat as well, but I didn't paint the Jenga blocks. And then using the dry brush method, I just used a very tiny bit of the Java chalk paint to distress the shiplap and the shingles. Now to glue the lemonade pitcher onto the lemonade itself, I just put a few small dots of hot glue in the middle of the lemon slices so you won't even notice them. 
And then I'm going to take some of the little lemon seeds and I'm going to glue those inside the glass of lemonade itself. And before I glue it all down onto my lemonade stand sign, I'm going to take my white acrylic chalk marker and just outline a few areas on the picture to make it stand out more and look more like a glare on the picture. Once that's dry, I just hot glue it onto my lemonade stand and then also glue down the cup of lemonade. And what glass of lemonade is complete without a slice of lemon off the top of the rim of the glass? I happen to have some scrap yellow fabric that came from a banner from my grandson's first birthday party. And I'm going to cut some little pieces to make a bunting garland. I cut out enough to spell the word lemonade and then just cut in the bottom by folding it in half into a little triangle. And now using my green acrylic paint marker, I'm going to spell out the letters lemonade on each piece of the bunting. A very, very sweet subscriber of mine, Miss Rochelle Craig, sent me this sticky silicone mat and it is fantastic. It sticks down to your work surface so you can use it for glue or whatever else you need that doesn't stick to the mat itself. However, since the mat is sticky on one side, it stays in place. So thank you, Miss Rochelle, because this mat is awesome, just like you. So after I put my bunting garland together, I'm going to take my shrinky dink lemons and I'm going to glue them to the shiplap of the stand. Stay tuned for the final reveal, but for now, let's get to the cost breakdown. The clear cutting mat was about 50 cents. The lemon stickers were about 50 cents. The craft foam about 50 cents and the craft sticks about 10 cents. The most expensive thing in this craft was the shrinky dinks at about $2 bringing the whole cost in to about $4.23. And now it's time for DIY number four, the lemon tree. I've had this little polka dotted flower pot in my stash for a couple of years now. Just never could figure out what to do with it. So I'm going to take some of this painter's tape, go around the edges so that I can paint a blue stripe on the top and the bottom. You'll notice I'm using small pieces at a time because the way this flower pot is curved, it's hard to get a straight edge using one solid piece of painter's tape. And in order to help that acrylic paint stick to the porcelain better, I decided to try putting down some Mod Podge first. It did help the glue to adhere to the porcelain, but whenever I peeled the painter's tape up, well, you'll see. You may also notice that the bottom already has a blue stripe because I tried to paint it with the acrylic paint and it just wasn't sticking very well. That's why I decided to go in with the Mod Podge. Now once the Mod Podge was dry, I went over it with the coat of the cobalt blue, of course taking some out of the cap because there was none left in the bottle, and I'm going to go around the rims and even the top of the flower pot to give it a stripe. And here comes the tape peel, which, like I said, did not quite go as expected. It's a little chippy, but 
it was workable. And that's kind of my signature anyway. Nothing I make is ever perfect. Now, I needed something to decoupage onto this pot, so I went window shopping. And by window shopping, I mean I got online on Windows and I looked up free printables. I found that lemon paper, printed it out, and then cut out every lemon on the page. And now I'm just taking some more Mod Podge and I'm decoupaging them onto my flower pot. To make the greenery for my tree, I'm just going to use some craft foam, a skewer, some jewelry wire, and some scrap greenery and floral tape. I put the foam down in the bottom of the pot and then started to wrap my skewer with my floral tape. As I got up in height, I then added some scrap greenery, just some leaves that I had taken off some other florals for another project, and I wrapped that in the floral tape onto the skewer. I add some more leaves as I go up and then I add in some wire. I just wrapped the wire around the skewer a few times, then held it in place with my finger as I continued to wrap it with the floral tape. I have two lemons to hang from my tree, so I'll need two pieces of wire, and again, I wrap both of them in the floral tape. Now to use some lemons for my lemon tree, I bought some lemon juice at Walmart. I emptied it out, and those are going to be the lemons that I use on my tree. But don't worry, I didn't waste the lemon juice. Of course I used that on something else. And now with a shaky camera, I'm going to wrap that wrapped wire around the top of my lemon and I'm just using a little hot glue to hold it in place. Once they're both glued onto the wire, I'll stick my skewer into my floral foam and then fill the rest of my pot with some of that icky, messy moss. Not shown on camera, I also embellished it with a little bit of some greenery garland and some curled yarn. Now this little lemon tree only costs about $1.50 with the flower pot being about 50 cents if you bought one at Dollar Tree, a free printable, some lemon juice, and a few other things like the foam, skewer, moss, and greenery. Now we're coming up close to the end. Let's get into our fifth and final project, an interchangeable dry erase board. Once again, I'm going to be using some clear cutting mats from the Dollar Tree but this time I'll be using both of them. And using a piece of foam core board that I've cut down, I'm going to poke some holes in the top to make the hangers, and then we'll simply glue our cutting mats onto the board. However, you want to leave the top cutting mat open at the top. Yeah, don't glue that one down because that's where we're going to put our interchangeable signs. So starting with the first cutting mat, I'm just going to lay it down onto my foam core board and make sure that it's straight. 
and then go in with a thin line of hot glue and place that down. And then also put a bead of hot glue down each side and press your cutting mat down onto the foam core board. Try to lay the hot glue as close to the edge of the cutting mat as you can. That way it gives you enough room to slip as many signs, or whatever sizes, into it. And then for the bottom cutting mat, you want to lay down another thin line of hot glue all the way around all four of the edges. This is going to be our dry erase board. So make sure when you lay the cutting mat down, you put the shiny slippery side facing up. Now you can embellish this however you want to match your decor, but I decided to go with just some burlap ribbon around the edges. And at the corners, I cut them at a 45 degree angle. Just a reminder, hot glue goes through burlap, so make sure to use your finger protectors. Now since we left the cutting mat at the top unglued to the foam core board, I'm going to glue the burlap ribbon to the cutting mat itself. And to hide the seam where the two cutting boards meet in the middle of the foam core board, another strip of burlap ribbon. Now last year I was able to get my hands on the ever coveted Farmhouse Dollar Tree calendar. Thanks to Cory over at Crafted by Cory because she was hosting a giveaway, and I won! So, once again, thank you, Cory. You never know how much that meant to me. And I used the lemonade page to slip into the interchangeable part of our board. Now, I'm taking some jute rope and a little bit of that burlap ribbon, and I'm gluing it to the cap of a dry erase marker. I'm going to hang that from our sign so it'll always be there. And in order to make sure it doesn't fall off, I'm going to use some more brads. I use a mini screwdriver to poke a hole in the foam core board. I'm going to tie the pin, or dry erase marker, to the brad. Then on the back side of the board, I'll open the brad and hot glue that in place. For some final touches, I made a bow out of this burlap ribbon and used a burlap flower that I had got off Amazon. I'm taking some sticky back velcro and I'm going to put one on my bow and one on my burlap ribbon on the board. That way I can change out the bow whenever I want to as well. Because one thing about me is I like to change my mind a lot. So if I want to change out the bow, I'll change out the bow. Oh. And I also put some brads in each of the corners where all that burlap ribbon met. And this was my favorite project, and the cost breakdown came down to only $2.75. And actually that's being quite generous considering I didn't use that much burlap ribbon. And the calendar page, for me, was free. So I bet you're ready to see all these beautiful projects and their great glory. So here they are in the final reveal.
So what did you think? Were they magic or mishap? Let me know down in the comments below. Oh, and I bet you think I made some lemonade with that lemon juice, right? Wrong. I used it to clean out my garbage disposal and my dishwasher. I'd really love for you to join the pixie party if you haven't already. So click that subscribe button down below and don't forget to ring my bell and click all so you'll know every time I upload a video. Because it really supports my channel when you subscribe, like, share, and comment. And with all that being said, let me leave you with this. When life gives you lemons, put them on your tiered tray. I hope you found lots of inspiration in this video. And thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderfully blessed day. Please remember that all of me loves all of you.